After four years of operation, the InSight lander succumbed to dust accumulation on its solar panels in December. Here's why this matters for humans going to Mars and doesn't matter for samples awaiting return to Earth on this episode of Mars Guy. InSight landed in November 2018 to start a mission intended to go for just over one Mars year, nearly two Earth years. It managed to last more than twice that, gathering seismic data that have revolutionized our understanding of the Martian interior and Mars quake activity in the crust. Although not one of its mission objectives, InSight also has provided ground truth that planners of human missions to Mars should take note of. Brighter regions are best to avoid. The brighter regions on Mars are places where dust has settled on darker, mostly gray, mostly volcanic material. Iron-rich Martian dust, oxidized to rusty hues, gets carried high into the thin Martian atmosphere, where it can travel the globe during dust storms before settling out like very fine ash. The fact that there are any dark regions on Mars means that dust gets lifted from them by wind activity, like dust devils. The Spirit rover lasted for more than six years thanks to repeated cleaning of its solar panels by dust devils. They're so common and effective across this location in Gusev Crater that their tracks are visible from orbit. The Opportunity rover landed in Merniani Planum and lasted nearly 15 years. Here's Mars Guy for scale. This is one of the darkest, least dusty locations on Mars thanks to effective wind activity that regularly clears the dust. But InSight is in a location that is relatively bright and shows only vague traces of dust devils despite onboard sensors that routinely detected the pressure drop and rotating wind of passing dust devils. So it may be that there's not enough mobile sand for the swirling winds to use to scour dust off the surface, including from solar panels. Setting up a Mars base in a location like this would mean that all exposed surfaces, whether on solar panels, windows, or instruments, would need routine cleaning, adding to what likely will be a long task list for the inhabitants. Choosing a site in a darker region on Mars, like that of Jezero Crater, home to the Perseverance rover, means that Mars does the cleaning. After nearly two years on the surface, Perseverance has accumulated minimal dust. It did take a hit from a wind gust that managed to dump a load of dark sand on it, but this happened just once, last January, and it's never happened to any other surface mission. Perseverance has spotted many dust devils as well as wind-driven dust plumes, showing how surfaces in Jezero Crater and on Perseverance have managed to remain relatively dust-free. This leads us to the sample tubes now being dropped in the dirt, which I described in the previous episode. Perseverance is slowly building a depot of samples that serves as a backup for a scenario in which it's not able to deliver its onboard samples to the rocket that will carry them into space. In that case, two Ingenuity-class helicopters will do the job. But that wouldn't happen until 2030, meaning the sample tubes will sit exposed on the surface for at least eight years. Not to worry, though. Thanks to an insight from InSight, we know that even in a dusty place on Mars, dust accumulation is slow enough that it wouldn't bury a sample tube. It didn't even cover the thin ribbon cable of the seismometer. And don't worry about sandstorms like the one that nearly killed Mark Watney. They only happen in Hollywood. 